If someone were to ask me what makes an awesome day out on the water, I'd say good company, great fishing, and a pretty peaceful and relaxing atmosphere outside of all the action from the fishing. Well, today I'm out with John and Josh and Ray. It's a great company. The fishing is great, as you'll see in the video. And unfortunately, it's not very peaceful and relaxing Little because guy. we have nearby construction and we've got the appearance of a Karen and her husband, Darren. But at the end, awesome day. So obviously this is not the size fish that we're looking for. The minimum limit for tog at this time of year is 15 inches, one fish per day in New Jersey. Uh, and you can hear now we're being introduced to the noise that we're gonna have next to this all day. We're fishing right next to new construction, right on the, right on the bulkhead. Um, so I'm gonna do my best with the audio throughout this video to reduce that and minimize the distractions as we go forward. I think I know how to use them, Josh. It's a decent one. I don't think so. So you just heard me talking to Josh. He was making fun of me because I wasn't catching uh, anything but oyster crackers. Uh, he is the owner of Hearst Tackle. I'm using one of his jigs right now and he was saying I just didn't know how to use it properly. But as you can see, I apparently do know how to use it properly, or at least I figured it out. I'm also going to be using jigs from Captain Hank's tackle uh, in the video as well, and they both produced very well for me throughout the day. There we go. That's a good one. So a quick rundown on the spot. Um, it is now outgoing tide, so it's coming from my face towards me. Uh, the wind is also coming in that direction, and we found a little bit of an eddy on the backside of some heavy structure, a drop-off that goes from about four feet all the way down to 40. So we're really fishing that drop-off and looking to see what we can get in that structure there, along with the hard structure that's on the bottom. There's a lot of rocks and a lot of pilings around. This is gonna be one of those days where you really have to work to build the bite. Now you can see that none of us except for Josh up along the side of that barge are anchored up or stationary. So we're all doing a drift and in order to build the bite, we have to continually keep running over the same structure, dropping the baits down, clipping the, the claws and the legs off so that they're falling down into this area. So it takes a little while. And just like, just like tog fishing anywhere, really, you're gonna to have to build that bite. You're gonna to have to pick through the smalls in order to find the, the nicer sized fish. Uh, but they do end up coming as we go through the day. Oyster. Oh, is it? Yep. Nope. Little tog. Oh baby. The primary bait for today is green crabs, so just cutting off the claws and the legs, letting those drop into the water as chum, cutting them in half, and then just threading the needle through one of the holes left by the claw or the leg, and just out through the body, drop it to the bottom. Lordy Lou, Johnny boy! <laughs> There's a four inch fish. It's still a nice fish. There you go. That was one of John's fish, many fish. And now here Ray there you go. is up to bat and he's gonna pull in a really nice one. Just borderline keeper on this one as it comes in. Well, at least it's not an oyster. I couldn't get away from them. So after this catch by Ray, things start to pick up all around for everyone. 
but it also picks up for the Karen and the Darren who own the property of the house that's being built right next to us and they decide they want to make an appearance. Hey guys, we're not tying up to here. This is all private property. Yo, John. Oh, that good one? Yeah. yeah. At this point, the homeowner is correct in one thing and incorrect in the other. First, he tells the boats they can't tie off to his bulkhead. He is technically correct on that. That's his property. They can't tie off to it. But what he's incorrect about is whether or not he owns the water we're fishing. Now, he doesn't really push it at that moment, but he's going to in a moment. And I'm switching camera views now. I'm on to the front-facing secondary one, which has poor audio because the battery on the one on my head died. So Darren and Karen have walked away, but I guess they just want to come back for more because they're going to turn around. The boats are not tied up anymore, but he doesn't like them being where they are. So he's back on the bulkhead. Go Johnny. I guess you can wait out in the water? It's not. Actually, as a guy who owns a house in Stone Harbor, you're wrong. But hey, I understand you telling them not to tie up, but you can't tell them not to go on the water. You don't own the Atlantic. Yeah, so stop trying to tell people to move. You don't own this. Then you know what? Go call the police and have them come over because I've talked to them before. Okay, that's fine. I'm just telling you. No, you can tell me whatever you want, but the fact is, you're wrong. big question here is do we have the right to be on the water and they don't have any right to kick us out of the water uh, you know in front of the property whether they own what's under it or not we have the right to be there according to the law For the next five to ten minutes, they're on their phones around the corner of their house, Googling. They find out we're right, and thankfully, they just disappear. You know the best part? They're going to be fuming all the way back to Pennsylvania. Because they know that we're still here fishing. So I don't run into them often, but when you're fishing, Karen's do happen. So let me know in the comments if you've had a similar situation in the past. So through all the construction noise and Karen's, we get one of the construction workers just serenading us. I like that song. It's beautiful. And the bike just continues. You know, they could be complaining and yelling at us as much as they wanted, but the entire time, nobody stopped fishing. Uh, we just continued to drop crabs. Um, you can't see him off to the left is Josh. He's still just hanging out right next to that, that barge, just dropping baits and bailing fish. Uh, Josh actually ends up catching over 40 fish on the day and a couple of keepers. I don't really have him on much video because he was off in the distance a little bit, but we're just going to continue going, continue dropping down to the bottom. We're going to try fleas, try different jigs, different rigs, different rods, um, and it, it's just not going to change. Johnny.
No, the other one was only 13 and a half. Yep. What's that? <laughs> I try. He, he's uh, over there on the barge. He's out caught all of us combined. He's out caught all of us combined. <laughs> my, fir my first uh, 10 fish were oysters. It's brutal. for four hours all you got to do is put your uh, earbuds in and listen to something else there. yo john as i reel in this fish just want to give a quick thank you to bill d who was the first person to join the channel membership for this youtube channel really really appreciate the support if you're interested in checking out the three levels of membership that we have Below the video, you can click the join button and there's a short video in there so you can see the perks and benefits of each tier. As is typical when fishing for tog, you're gonna lose some rigs. And uh, as you can see right now, I switched over to spinning gear. So I have my Star Aerial with the Stratic on it. Earlier, I was using a Creely Custom Rod uh, with an Accurist Baitcaster reel. Links for all the equipment that I'm using is in the description below. In this clip right here, you can very really clearly see Josh sitting up there right against that barge, and he stayed there really the entire day. And he built an incredible bite, um, and that's the difference between drifting, like the rest of us are doing, and sitting in one spot. He was able to build a really significant, consistent bite throughout the day. We had to move around and kind of work together as a team to really get that one small area active, and we would just kind of cross over each other back and forth. Um, but it turned out really well for us. Well, I'll measure it if anyone wants it. Fourteen and three quarter. So it's not going to measure a keeper size. It's about a quarter inch under. But man, beautiful, ugly fish that a tog is. Um, so. This one's gonna get set free. Popping up the screen right now is a playlist and a video on tog fishing that I think you'll enjoy now that you've watched this one. I'll see you over in the next video.